We are just hours away from kicking off the longest weekend of the year. Daylight saving ends Sunday, which means an extra hour of sleep for most of us. But there is a big effort to, to, to end rather time change. Yep, the time has come once again to change our clocks. So how did daylight saving get started and do we actually need it? Let's connect the dots. The idea of daylight saving has been around since the 1800s. Set the clocks forward in the summer so that evenings last longer, then set them back in the fall to see daylight earlier in the morning. It was widely considered the best way to do things until the energy crisis in the 1970s. Many countries along the equator decided to ditch daylight saving. But the experiment was wildly unpopular in America. People hated waking up in the dark, going to work in the dark, and especially sending their kids to school in the dark. But in recent years, the push to leave the clocks alone has gained steam. At least 36 states have introduced bills to end or study it, and hashtags like ditch the switch and lock the clock have filled our news feeds. Studies even show that the day after daylight saving begins in the spring, we're at a greater risk of heart attack and stroke, as well as car crashes and workplace accidents. Still, daylight saving is sticking around, at least for now. So enjoy that extra hour of sleep this weekend. So Oregon and Washington are two of the states that have passed bills to stop the time change. But in order for those laws to go into effect, a couple of things have to happen. First, California would have to adopt a similar bill just so that the West Coast is all similar and can be set, kept on the same time. Then Congress would still have to approve it. So still a fair ways off.